what is going on man welcome to another video today is going to be sort of a part two to my video of how to become a referee because that video seemed to do well and i want to talk about more things as far as becoming a referee what it takes and you know how to get to the level that you want to get to and if you're not there yet what you can do to get there all right so here we go <laughs> I have a game today. I'm just trying to get focused, get ready for the game, and this is still my number one way of just clearing my head. Coffee in one hand, camera in the other. Today's gonna be a good day. I'm, uh, I got my first Catholic school JV game today. And let me just tell you what it took for me to get to the point of being a brand new ref a few years ago, and now becoming a solid referee on Staten Island and refing over 60 high school games in a season. That's just going from refing nothing but younger kids. So here's how I did it. So in the last video, I, I, I gave you a few points on how to become a referee, right? You gotta pick your sport, you gotta show no emotion, stuff like that. This video, I wanna expand upon those. And when you pick your sport, you need to understand the sport. It's helpful if you played, but you don't need to have played it. That's number one. And number two is body language. So what I mean by that is how to become a better referee with your body language. Look at the difference between when I walk like this to when I walk like this. When you're a ref, you have to stand tall, be proud, and you have to be confident that you're the best ref in the room, even if you're not. That's how I've done well in my career of being a ref, just being confident and, you know, not letting people walk all over me. It's a big part of it. The look is everything. Do you want to come inside? So one of the things that I was always taught from the time I started to rep was that you need to get film of yourself in order to become better. And I didn't really understand that until I saw myself on camera and saw the way I looked with how I was kind of like slouching and I was kind of not looking so confident and sort of just there. Now, as a ref, you want to be invisible but in a way that everybody still knows that you're there. So you need to be confident in your call, you need to be confident in yourself, and you need to run the game, as we say. So the only way to really see if you look confident, because you could feel it, but if you don't look it, what's the point, right? That's a big part of it. We just talked about the look. It's everything. So getting some film of yourself, will really, really help you move on and improve as a ref. You'll go from here to here because you'll finally see how you look and you'll see things that you do right, things that you do wrong. And then on top of that, you get to see the plays that you missed or you didn't miss. You want to become a better ref? Got to get the film. All right, so we made it to the varsity game. First one of the season, first official one of my career. We're here. It's time to go big. Wish me luck. Hey, guys. There's a helicopter. Anyway, so the last 
Last night's game went really well. First official varsity game of the season in the books. Can cross that off the list. And I'm really excited to say I can't time these videos better. I swear to God, there's always like a plane or a car coming or in this case, a helicopter. Anyway, so last night's varsity game went really well. Uh, my assigner was there. She said I did well and it happened to be a blowout, but that's okay. You know, at that point, it's all about game management. And that's another way to become a better ref is by game management. You know, making sure the game doesn't get out of hand, making sure that the players are doing what they're supposed to do and the coaches are doing what they're supposed to do, making sure nobody, everybody knows their place. So the game went good and I'm happy to say it. Here's the last tip. So besides changing on my body language and also, you know, getting filmed myself, another thing that I did to become a better ref was to take as much advice from other refs as I could. And by that, I mean, finding mentors that really helped me and having the go-to person to ask when it came to rules, when it came to plays, things like that. And it really does help when somebody else is watching you as opposed, another ref I should say is watching you as opposed to you just assuming what you did wrong and right. If you can get somebody to keep an eye on you, if you can get somebody to watch your games, even if you know they're gonna do the next game and they happen to be there, ask them, hey, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? You got any tips for me? That's something that really helped me along the way. Even quick little tips like, you know, stand tall, be proud, right? Somebody told me that. I didn't come up with that with myself. And, you know, about fouls and about violations, you know, keeping my mechanics really, really t tight and sharp, making sure that everybody knows what's going on. And that whole saying that when the ball's dead, we become alive. I learned that recently from another ref. Somebody else taught me that. So listening to others' advice really makes a difference and taking it and actually applying it to your game makes a huge difference. That's all I have for you today. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. You already know. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and click subscribe. And don't forget to turn notifications on because I drop a new video every week on every Thursday. That's going to be the day that I'm dropping the new videos and you don't want to miss them. I will talk to all of you in the next video. Peace.